to be an Olympic champion was my dream. It was the only reason I stayed till Rio. When I sat down, I think I was in the bath actually, I got a bath. And I was sitting in the bath and I just, I, I broke down crying. And I, I didn't, no one else see me crying. I just sat there and I was just sitting there for about, you know, 30 minutes in the bath, chilling out. And, and even now I can, I can feel the emotion. And I, I just cried, I was like, that's it, like, I'm never ever going to be an Olympic champion. And that was my team. Michael, what I want to do is I want to take us back to Rio, to the summer of 2016, your quarter-final against Vladimir Nikitin. Good stuff. Well, that's the first round. Yep. Some images here of that round. That's the first round. Um, no matter what commentary you listen to, and I was there, obviously you were there, how did you feel that first round should have been scored? Because it was scored 10-9 in his favour mm. across the board. How did you feel it should have been scored? I thought it would have been 10-9 the whole way across the board for me, but it wasn't. And I came back to the corner. Big smell and face coach Zora yeah. and my dad was in the corner. And so I said, great round, great round, that's a brilliant round, brilliant round. And then I think Paddy Barnes was in, looking at the scores, obviously, yeah, where, yeah, where the TVs like, were. Like. And he shut it down, he's lost. He's lost that round. Did and you get that message whilst so you were in the got corner? That in that, and my dad turned around, uh, so I didn't hear him say that, but my dad and my dad turned around and says, you need to go forward, they're trying to f*** you. You need to go and punch the f*** out of this guy. Go, you can, because, and you know what? When I'm thinking back now, I remember like the nights before and stuff. I said I didn't know nothing. They kind of knew what was going on. And my dad said, you, you know you can stop this guy. And he kept saying it to me, you know you can stop this guy. I said, 100% I can, I know I can. And uh, so he said it to me, and that you need, to, you need to stop him, you need to go forward. So I kind of knew something was up. But, but, but Mike, it was perfect. He catches you with, literally, I was watching him, not you, because I remember what yeah, you yeah. did. And he catches you with maybe four shots, mm. but that's maybe four shots, and it's how much a boxing score with different judges around the ring. So yeah. you're not going to get four shots. Yeah. How they gave him ten is a mystery. I don't even know if he lands ten shots on your gloves, let yeah. alone on your face. But that, that's all very well. Your dad's saying you've got to go out and stop him, but you've just boxed his ears off. You've yeah. just boxed beautifully. Mm. It was good. It was a, it was a nice round. I enjoyed it. Um, even watching backer, you can see there is more competitiveness of it, you know, when, when you're thinking of it now, but um, in hindsight, you know, when you're looking at it, but I still believe I won it comfortably. I think I know Vladimir Nikita more than, more than most people, more than any of the opponents he faced in the past, and more than any of the opponents I've faced, so I know the noises the guy makes when he's hit. I, I heard, when you catch him with a shot, I heard him wince many a time, and there it was hair clashes, and he was wincing with hair clashes and body shots, and I, so I know I kind of really know him, and you know it's 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 an interesting one that excites me all the time. <laughs> Let's have a little look at some of the highlights from the second round. Let's just go through those.
round clearer than you won the first round. Luckily, yeah. the judges gave it to you. Yeah. I think when it came to that round, scoring was irrelevant because the came to the whole fight, scoring was irrelevant because the fight was already done. But preordained. If I'm honest, when they told me I got that, I went, "It's okay, I've got it now. It's back. I'll just go out and do the same thing again." What about these interruptions? I mean, we've, we've, we're looking at some pictures. We've yeah. seen some pictures of the cut on his head with the, you know, that had the staples in it. He's still got that yeah. cut. In fact, I bumped into him in Russia in the summer, and that's how I recognised him. Yeah. Not from his face, but from that little cut. The, on his head. I mean, he was in a real state, blood-wise, and it gave him so many breaks. Yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. The referee, I think her name was Kira Sakub, I think. Um, there's so many times in there where you're going, why is she stopping this? Like, the cut is on the head, it's not going in his eyes. Why is she wiping my face? Because it's not my eyes. There was so many things they done, which it was like, we'll give him more rest. It, well, in my opinion, it was like, they give him a bit more rest to kind of get back up to try and get this round. They make it a bit more clear, but they couldn't, they couldn't do enough. Could you sense in that second round that you'd hurt him with some of those right hands? The two, the yeah. two occasions you hit him once, Twice, three times, because you yeah. sense you'd hurt him. Uh, there, the, especially when I piled the pressure on him and yeah. started to push him back and push him back, I knew I'd hurt him then. And then she called break and cleaned him again. But I, I was hearing, and then points, that's where I was hearing him wince. That's when I was hearing him making noises and stuff. And I was like, oh, you're a bitch, man, you're, you're done. And, and I, I knew I had him. If, if that ref, if it had been a different referee who wasn't kind of interrupting so much, I would have had him in the third round. So what's going in your mind going into the third round? Paddy Barnes has let your father and everybody yeah. in the corner know. You know your evens now. What's yeah. going through your mind going into the third round? I've got this. Simple as that. i got this. Same again. Let, let's, let's go and do it again. i got this. I knew, I, I knew, I knew that was me. I, I got it in the bag. Little that I know I didn't, but I believed it is. round my memory again had some kind of slugfest yeah it might have been the cleanest round i think so i always thought thir first round was my cleanest second round i destroyed him and i, I, I always kind of thought i just out battled him but actually out boxing at the same time with fighting him as well it was my best round and i destroyed him this has just showed me that like this guy is not going to go past five rounds with me i will him up and I'm sorry for cursing but this is what it is I'm going to destroy this guy and this is exciting well let's 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 go now okay let's look at some images let's just remind ourselves you've gone back to your corner yeah I know the first round was bad the second round you come back you're not you're not to know the result here so don't let you yeah. know the result of the third round let's go to that moment when you're pulled to the middle of the yeah. ring for the decision let's have a look at that There's one image, there's one particular picture, and it's that moment when his hand is raised. He can't believe it. Yeah. And there's a look on your face. It, I don't know if it, I don't know what it is. It's not shock. It's it's half disgust. I mean, look, mm. it almost doesn't look like you, Michael. Uh, it almost looks like something's pos taken possession it's like of your some, face. It's some beast there. It does, yeah. <laughs> look at that. I mean, that is... <laughs> I mean, yeah. even your body's gone to a different shape. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. That was must have been absolute dis, utter belief at that point. Yeah, and you know what? I, I kind of wish I had to stay in the ring a bit longer. 
I remember Jamie and mum said, stay in the ring, stay in the ring. And I was kind of going to do an Alexis Bass thing, God rest his soul. S sit down. And sit down. Yeah. But I didn't. I, I just, I gave the fingers and I was so close to slapping the judges when I was walking away because they were all sitting down at the ring. I wanted to spit on them and I know spitting is the most disgusting thing you can do. So I was going to spit on them. That's how hard veil I felt. How nasty you were. And I just, I was walking around, I was, I was saying and and so like everyone walked past you and walking on. Then I got to the interview and they just let me loose. Mm. You know, BBC blamed at me, they went, no, we don't want it. RT, go ahead, RT, put I came, the lights on. I can't even found you though, I can't even You came and found me, but RT put the lights on right away and let me speak um, a true, honest uh, interview. And you know what, I, I'm really happy they did. Once you've left the ring, now, once you've finally left the ring and after you've done the infamous interview with RTE, yeah, I've never asked this, what do you do for the rest of the night? Can you calm down? Do you have to go on a rampage? No, so do they put you under lock and key at the hotel? What no, do you do? I left the village. I left the village and I got a phone call from CNN. CNN wanted to call it the corruption. So I went to some, some uh, hotel, sky kind of rooftop, of, of room it was and, and I sat there and then the interview with CNN. I got the load in from a dance so I know what I was saying and uh, I was just like, they're cheating, they're cheating and this is why they're cheating and this is what's happened, oh. this is what's going on and, and they ran with it and, and it was it was brilliant. I sent a tweet out to Putin, just let him know how much did they pay him. That, that, came, that, that went a, viral. That was, great, that was a great tweet, yeah. That went viral um, and then I was just at home and you know what? It's the first time after any fight, I haven't put weight on. I couldn't eat. Is that right? I didn't eat. So I you could. felt sick? I just felt sick. And, and, and that, I didn't actually put weight on until after my debut. I was like, my weight was so easy to make for my debut. And I was thinking it was hard, but I was only like 10 pounds over. And I was like, really? After five months or six, wow, six, six months or something, I was like, I haven't put weight on. Was there a point when you sat down and it got to you, the emotion got to you? Mm. When you know we're we're we're, we're half joking yeah. here, we're watching it, and we're sort yeah. of celebrating. But there must have been a point. My, I mean, I had it that night, just sitting yeah. there feeling pig sick for you. So wh when did that hit you? Yeah, I was in I was in uh, the apartment. My, my mum, Jamie, uh, Shauna, and, and my daughter were in the apartment. So my dad, me and my dad left the village, and we went and stayed because I was the last Irish fighter, so I was I lost. So we went and stayed with the family, and uh, I remember sitting in the apartment that night and realizing that. To be an Olympic champion was my dream. It was the only reason I stayed till Rio. And do I regret staying to Rio after everything has happened? No, because it's made me the fair I am today. It, it gave me that experience. It made me to become Ireland's first ever male world champion and European champion and Commonwealth champion and doing all the, the things I did. So I don't regret staying. But when I sat down, I think I was in the bath actually. I got a bath. And I was sitting in the bath, and I just I, I broke down crying, and I, I didn't. No one else see me crying. I just sat there, and I was just sitting there for about, you know, thirty minutes in the bath, chilling out, and, and even now I can I can feel the emotion. Mm. And I, I just cried. I was like, that's it, like, f me. What what, what, what what was the four years about? And then obviously, in hindsight, I look back and I know what it's about, and, and everything was was worthwhile. But when I sat there and, and I thought about it, I was like. F me, I'm never ever going to be an Olympic champion, and that was my team. That was my team, world number one, number one in the competition, number one seed, favorite winning gold. So, like when I sat there and, and I thought about it, 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 it did it did break my heart. I'll be honest, but now I'm at peace with it. Let's talk about the the the, the nicotine third fight, which is yeah. you know the, the rematch. It's going to be uh, Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Um, oh, is it eight or ten rounds? 10. 10, it's over 10. 10. He's only had three fights, but that doesn't matter to you, does it? Because nah. it's not about what he's done, it's just about you and him settling something. That's all it is, it's about me and him. Um, it's not about records, really. Um, and it doesn't, this fight, if I'm honest, in terms of my career, in terms of progression and, and where I want to be, this fight does absolutely nothing. Mm. This fight is, is more, if I look at it, this is like high risk. Zero it reward. It does, does a lot more for him than it does for you. Hundred percent. This is this is high risk, zero reward for me. Um, it's no more personal now. Like when I when I think about it, this guy, yes, he is, he has something on me, and it's something that deep down I might still feel it personally. But 
in terms of my career, this is a business move. Um, yeah. I know it's I know it's I know, I know it's a, a risky fight, but it's a fight where I can go in, do well, make good money, beat him, you know, put it to bed and, and, and close this chapter of my career. Well, Michael, thanks for your time. Yes, Steve. Enjoy your time in New York. Do what you got to do. But the key word is enjoy it, because they'll enjoy you. Yeah. Have a Merry Christmas, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Leave them with a Merry Christmas. Maybe not nicotine. Nah. Maybe ruin his Christmas. I'll give him a bag of coal and I'll send them back to <laughs> Russia.